Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about something very exciting and that is refer brushes. You guys have seen me talk about these in my favorites videos. I've been using these in tutorials. Recently I used what no, number three. This was used in my Natasha Denona Sunrise palette review or tutorial, whatever. And I use this on my lower lash line. I'm obsessed with this brush. <laughs> and I got so many comments about it, but they are doing a Kickstarter. This starts today. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna go over each of the collections and the brushes that I have. I don't think I have all of them, but I have most of them. I'm gonna give you guys the information and then I'm also going to link down below the Kickstarter where you can go find it. And there's also a video. Make sure you check out that video. Refer started out with three engineers that knew absolutely nothing about makeup, but they designed these brushes, they sent them out to enthusiasts all over the world, and then got individual feedback. Over 4,000 individual feedbacks from people, and they finally have created their line. And I'm so excited about this because when I heard like the whole process, how they would send brushes and then tweak them, and you know, I have personally sent them ideas for brushes, I just think it is amazing. And I had the opportunity to go meet Tom from Refer with Kelsey. And it was just such an amazing experience. And these brushes, I stand behind 100%. I am not sponsored. These were sent to me, but this is not sponsored in any way. I'm just sharing this information because I think you guys will love these. Anybody who likes brushes along the lines like Wayne Goss, I think you were going to really enjoy these. So now let me get into some of the facts. So the Kickstarter starts today and these brushes were all handcrafted by master artisans in the historical brush capital of the world, Kimono, Japan. The end-to-end -end process takes four months to create and then they will be starting the production in August. They have a total of 15 different brushes and they're going to be categorized in two different collections. First off, we have the core collection. The core collection is a set of five do-it-all brushes that anyone can do an entire look with. Each brush strikes the optimal balance between softness and performance, but what really sets them apart is their maximum versatility. Now let me go ahead and show you the core collection because I think I actually have all of the brushes. One of mine I think is the prototype version, but these are the brushes here. I have used these to death and I love them and I absolutely agree that this gets your face done. This right here, it's the brushes one through five. So this is number five, I'm going completely backwards. This is so soft, but it's not too soft to where it's not going to pick up your powder products. I love to use this for blush. It's a beautiful brush. This one as well, the number four, you could totally use as a brush brush brush, blush brush as well, like an angled one, or you can use it for contour or bronzer. Again, the same kind of softness, just a little bit denser and obviously smaller. Then we have what everybody wants is basically like the MAC 239 is the Zero Two brush. This is a great packer shader brush for the lid. Very, very nice. And you can even use this right along the lower lash line, but you already know I'm taking this for the lower lash line. I love this brush. There is no other brush I have in my collection that is this small and yet this soft. This is ridiculously soft. So it blends. It's not harsh on the lower lash line. It's just a little bit bigger than the Wayne Goss number five, I believe is the number. And I love that brush too. Don't get me wrong, but this one's just tiny. It's so tiny. So it's great for that inner corner and really great for the lower lash line. And then we have the number one brush. I don't actually have the official number one, but it's similar to this right here. So it's a great blending brush for the crease, the outer corner and things like that. The core collection, as you can see, has straight matte black ferrules. And as the name suggests, you can do basically your entire face with just these five brushes. Now let's go on to the others. Next, we have the Bespoke collection. These are the brushes 11 through 20. 
These have the silver ferrule and then a glossy handle, whereas as you can see, matte black on matte black for the Quart collection. The Bespoke collection is not designed to be a brush set in itself. Rather, each brush in the collection is designed to address specific pain points that's been brought to our attention from the community. For instance, people with hooded eyes often replace brush 02 with brush number 15. Now, all of my brushes have like the PO7C, PO9A and whatnot. The actual collection will have the numbers on them, but I don't wanna keep going back and forth referring to the picture and then referring to the brush. So I'm just going to show you these brushes. <laughs> I feel like that's just the easiest way to do. This one right here was previously the number six for the core collection, but now is in with the bespoke. I love this brush. It is so soft. I have washed it several times and it's just, oh, this gets loose powder on your face so nicely. And if you want to apply bronzer really nicely and evenly, but not too harshly or heavily, this one is great. And then we have these two brushes right here. This one is much like the Wangas number two, but as you can see, it's a little bit more tapered and a little bit longer and so soft. All of these brushes are really soft, but again, not too soft. This is the PO8 to me and then the brush number 19, whereas the other one was 18, the last one we just talked about. This one, if you can see, it's kind of flattened like this instead of have it's tapered, but it's not as rounded as the other one. So this one has a slight pinch to it. So this is really great for application of blush. Whereas I would use this one if you had a larger face for highlighting or using it for powdering underneath the eyes. This one would also be really great for powder underneath the eyes. But me personally, I like this for blush. It's also really great for getting a nice contour. Then we have the fan brush. This one is very soft. It's Thin, so it's not going to apply too much. So it's not going to be the brush that you want to grab for and like go in with your highlighter. This is going to apply highlighter very softly. Personally, I don't use a brush like this too often, but I do like this brush more so for like loose highlighters. If I'm going to use any other type of highlighter, I usually like something that has a little bit more grip to it. This brush is super interesting. It is like a brush that you just cut off the top. So this would be amazing for buffing in small areas with powder or for foundation because it's really going to work it into the skin. I don't use brushes for pat. <laughs> I don't use brushes for powder. Yeah, right. I don't use brushes for foundation, but this I can tell just by the density and everything of it, it is perfect because it's not too dense and it's not too loose either, but I would use this more so for specific targeted areas of powder buffing, especially like the smile lines. This brush is really great at the end of the day and you need to get those smile lines out and even add a little bit of powder. That is what I have been loving this brush for. Then we have all these. Okay, uh, in love. I used this one for the first time in one of my tutorials and it's like, I think I called it the perfect boop brush. <laughs> this brush right here is bigger than most, let me see. I'm just pulling out my NARS, what number are you? I think it's called the contour brush, which makes absolutely no sense, but it's kind of like a pencil brush, bigger than a pencil brush, but it's domed. Now this one is even larger and I love this for the inner corner, especially if you want to be able to blend it out. It's a very unique brush to my collection. And then these guys right here, this is like a shorter version of the MAC 221. So you can use this a little bit better for the lower lash line and getting really great detail work. And then this is what I would consider to be the replacement to the MAC 221. So as you can see, the difference in length there. So this one is just a little bit longer and then you have the shorter version as well. And this I was so excited about. Instantly, when I saw this brush, I was like, ah, time for number 13. Hold on, let me get it. Because you know they don't make that brush anymore. It's only in synthetic. Uh, this is the synthetic version. <laughs> let me find my natural hair. 
So here you have it. This is the Tom Ford Natural Hair number 13 and then the Refer. This one I have not used as much as this one, so I have two of those. So you can see after it's been washed several times, it's like almost identical. And it's the same kind of fluffiness and density to it. It's perfect. It's the perfect replacement. It makes me so happy. And then this one right here, this is the PO7F to me or the number 16. <laughs> this is going to be great for people, especially like myself that have more lid and space up here right below the brow, because this will get down a transition color really quickly. And again, that taper tip just makes it to where it's just perfect. This is also great for pinpointing highlight. It's really nice. I love the core collection, but I'm in love with the bespoke collection. The only one from this line that I don't use so much is definitely the fan brush. And then there's one other thing I need to tell you guys, and that's about customization. Now I'm gonna read this because I don't wanna get it wrong. It says, at the end of our Kickstart campaign video, we will introduce customization options for our backers. Each set will be customizable with two handle styles, signature matte black straight, classic glossy black tapered, and four lengths. So you can have short, original, long, or extra long. Personally, I don't like short handled brushes. I don't really care if they are matte black or if they are glossy. I like the look of the matte back black. I'm tongue tied. The matte black personally, I just, I like that look, but I prefer either the long or original. The only reason why I don't really like the extra long is because I have a harder time storing them in my drawers because I like to have them all like specifically put in places and I have to store them sideways versus up and down in my drawer. So I like either the regular or the long, but that's just personal preference. I love that you are going to have the option of deciding which one works best for you. I love these brushes. I have used them consistently. I have washed them and I just, I have my name behind them 100%. I love them. If you do nothing else, just make sure you check out the Kickstarter video and just you know, get a little bit of information. I love how this brand started and how they went about making and designing these brushes. I just think it's, it's really neat and I think that they're gonna be going places. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.